Hi, it's Lerald, and it's been a bit. I've been spending most of the past couple of weeks running Mythic Plus in order to gear up my monk and Death Knight for raid, and it hasn't been going super well. That's kind of what provoked this whole video. So going from a recent Reddit post, by the second week of the War Within Season 1, the total number of Mythic Plus runs has already fallen below the corresponding second week of Dragonflight Season 2, which was the least played of the first three seasons of Dragonflight, the, the real seasons of that expansion. Players are unhappy with the state of Mythic Plus in the War Within, if my Twitter feed is any sort of indication, and I hope Blizzard is as well. So let's talk about what's wrong with Mythic Plus right now, why the community has gone so sour on, on Mythic Plus so quickly this season, the mistakes that I feel Blizzard has made, and what I think they can do to fix them. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now I'll start with saying that while I do Mythic Raid, and I take raiding pretty seriously, in Mythic Plus I almost always pug at least the DPS. It's not that I never ever play with guildies or, like, people I know or make any friends or anything, but I have never at any point in all the years since Legion first introduced Mythic Plus, played with a full set group of three DPS and a set healer and so on for like any length of time. It's always late night pugs, a lot of the time with Sunset, channel manager, healing, but never a set DPS group, and sometimes just full four people that I've never met before and will never see again, and me. And that's the perspective I'm taking here and kind of evaluating all of this. This isn't talking about like the absolute pinnacle of coordinated group pushing. It's also not really a complaint about difficulty per se. I like a challenge in video games. I did the Mage Tower as soon as it was released in Legion. I've beaten Elden Ring a lot, pre-nerf for dawn, blah, blah, blah. I play Path of Exile. I did tier 11 delves in the first couple weeks of the expansion and made videos about that. I did the double question mark Zekvir fight on multiple characters. Like I like solving difficult challenges in a video game. But I think Blizzard's big failure in terms of difficulty tuning on Mythic Plus is that this is a multiplayer game. So your success is dependent on other people performing up to a certain level. If the difficulty is tuned to the point that one or two mistakes from someone else prohibits your success, that is a design that breeds toxicity. It's baked in, and it seems to be the defining feature of Mythic Plus right now. So because of that, and because of the nature of playing with random groups of uncoordinated people who are typically not going to be blowing your mind with how great their damage is, I pretty much never play above the top of the reward structure. So if the best gear comes from a six, I'm gonna stop at a six. If it comes from an eight, I'm gonna stop at an eight. You get the idea. Now I may go over to whatever difficulty gives a portal just to like do it a couple of times and show, yes, I can get the portals, but then I'm pretty much just gonna play a lot of characters up to the max reward level and kind of stop there. I prefer to go wide rather than go tall. That's the Lerald guarantee. I spent a lot of time over the past few days thinking about what the Lerald guarantee is, and it's several things. It's that I will have multiple drinks open on my desk at once. It's that I will have a rock in my shoe while I'm at the grocery store. It's that I will sleep through my second snooze alarm, but mostly. It's that I will not go above the reward structure in Mythic Plus. Doing harder content with disorganized groups or just for the love of the game sounds about as fun to me as slamming my hand in a car door just for the love of the pain. So now I want to talk about the difficulty of Mythic Plus in this season, and I think the best place to start is with affixes. There's a quote I think I'm more or less paraphrasing here, but essentially Ian Hazakostas, the director of World of Warcraft, said they wanted players to play the dungeons rather than the affixes. So they reworked affixes going into this expansion, and people were super excited. I was super excited. I was very happy to have things like bursting and bol bolstering and all those horrible affixes go away. And then they introduced this new plus two bucket that rotates uh, on a weekly basis, and there are four of them. They're the Zalateth affixes, and I would say that they are semi-successful. Right now, as of recording this, we haven't done the fourth week yet. That one I have read up on, it's a heal absorb slash dispel mechanic. I think that these mechanics do an okay job of providing a kiss curse kind of mechanic where there's something that's that's bad, it sucks and then you deal with it, and then you get a big benefit out of it. I think that's okay. I think it's a lot better than things like bolstering and, and bursting that they're replacing. I don't really love it. There have been some inopportune times where the shielding mob pops up at right during the burn phase of a boss that's really, really irritating and can cause wipes or cause just a lot of difficulty on fights. But then there are some cool interactions as well, like that same shielding mob being touch of deathable from the moment it spawns. That was kind of cool. You know, I think more often than popping up at inopportune times, they have a tendency to pop up after a pull has finished, and now you're stuck 
standing there dealing with whatever the affix is for an extra 10 to 15 seconds of wasted time, which is pretty irritating. I don't feel like they're a significant improvement over the old affixes. I think that the positive upside of dealing with them is like good enough to get by, and there's not as much potential for awful edge cases like, say, explosive weeks on fights like Miss Caller, the second fight in Miss of Tiranesif. That particular overlap was a war crime, but really I think just not having bursting, not having bolstering, it's kind of good enough for me. I do feel like this has been an upgrade. All right, I got into editing and I realized there was one thing I missed that I definitely wanted to include about the Zelateth affixes, and that is the voice lines. They recorded one voice line for each time that she does her weekly affix call, and they're very long, like voice lines are very long, but they did one with no variation. Was Were they paying her by the hour? I guess they were paying her by the hour, but like the voice actress does a good job, but the lack of variety is maddening. And I don't think the intent is for her to drive the players at their computer insane, but it is working hearing that one same voice line over and over and over again in every single Mythic Plus that you run every single time that entire week. Also, as I was finishing up this post recording little bit of extra stuff, my channel manager dipped in to say, hey, don't forget to mention the balls just falling into lava or falling through the sky and giving the boss random buffs. And yes, this is another issue with all four of these affixes. They were technically tested on the beta, but they essentially came in untested and just not working. They had to take the one that they did this week and buff it by more than 100%. Uh, and they accidentally buffed the shield on it so that it just became completely unkillable while doing that, and they had to revert that. But they have just been wildly all over the place in terms of the tuning on these mechanics. They basically didn't work uh, on the first day of each of the weeks. Again, the orbs in Grim Batol, I unfortunately don't have any footage of it, but like all the way down in the canyon in Grim Batol, the orbs on whatever the name of the orb week is, were just spawning down there. Doing Siege of Boralus on the final boss, the orbs would spawn out in the water that you can't swim in, and they would just go to the boss. Just lots of stuff where it clearly didn't get any testing or fixing until players got to just do it live with it not working correctly. So that, I think, kind of really puts a bad taste in everybody's mouth right off the bat, on top of everything else. Now where things start to fall apart is in the plus four, plus seven, and plus ten buckets, and I think the best place to start there is with the plus seven bucket. Bumping the death timer penalty from 5 seconds up to 15 is mean-spirited. It's a spiteful move on Blizzard's part. It pretty much guarantees that any wipe in a high-level key is just going to be a depletion. And going back to my earlier point, this is a design that injects toxicity into the system as a feature, not a bug. I've had plenty of keys in which I, I played well, but somebody else in the group didn't, or just something went wrong, and now as the tank I'm left alone looking at a boss that has 60% of its health left. It's a tyrannical week, so my options are to try and solo it, which is going to take five minutes to probably deplete the key, or reset it or die. And then at that point, someone will decide that the key's not going to be timeable anymore, and the reward for completing is either gone or just less efficient than just giving up and leaving and trying to run a new key, and that's, that's the end of the run. Everyone's time has been wasted. Feels pretty bad. And it's an intentionally bad gameplay experience. It's not an accident. This is a design that is accomplishing what it's trying to do. And what it's trying to do is make people angry at each other and hate each other and not enjoy the time that they're spending in keys. So it achieves its goal flawlessly, but it's a goal that's bad. Zero stars. Now I want to talk about Fortified and Tyrannical. These are not fun affixes to me. These are, these are my least favorite affixes in the game. I would actually rather have Bursting Back. Giving monsters more health and damage is the most boring thing you can do to me. It's kind of the Blizzard guarantee, the Blizzard special, of this I'm certain. If they can't figure out how to make something more mechanically interesting, they just give it more health and damage a lot more. Being auto-attacked to death in one second isn't very interesting, but you can't argue that it's easy. It's definitely hard content, it's just boring hard. And I think that's kind of what they've been going for with a lot of the Mythic Plus this season. Tyrannical is especially criminal to me when playing with pugs, especially when the DPS just isn't that great because it adds such a massive amount of boss health. The increased damage from Tyrannical really isn't the main concern to me. People dying when they make mistakes makes some sense at some level of difficult content. 
but having both fort and tyrannical in every single week and plus 10 dungeons is the tuning equivalent of seeing a recipe call for, I don't know, one clove of garlic and dumping in a three pound bag. It stretches DPS so thin. There just isn't a point where you can hold offensive cooldowns reasonably to make the slow, difficult part of the dungeon go faster because it's always the difficult part and it's always the slow part. And then there's the 12 affix, which removes the plus 2 affix Zalateth bucket and just makes the game 20% harder. This is kind of the Blizzard special on Overdrive. It doesn't really add anything mechanical or interesting, just 20% more damage and 20% more health, I guess, to deal with. It's actually less interesting than runs under 12 because it literally removes an affix. It has provided high-level Mythic plus Masochist with the thing that they've been asking for since Legion, which is the removal of push weeks. So I think that it's a good thing. And that is probably the only good thing about it. Mythic scaling is infinite. That's the point of Mythic Plus as a system. So pushing your hand down on the scale as hard as you possibly can kind of serves no purpose on top of that. Like, I think that just cutting the plus two affix entirely would have worked fine. I, I think, again, it does its goal flawlessly. I just think it's a goal that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I would say task failed successfully. All right, now I'll talk about dungeons briefly. I think I could do an entire video just about the dungeons of this season. And I think that would actually be fun. So I'll be, be kind of be a bit more general here. I think Blizzard managed to avoid the dragonflight trap of all of the new dungeons being overtuned meat grinders and the old familiar dungeons being pretty fun and cool. I think the problem here is that they did this by making most of the old dungeons into overtuned meat grinders as well. Boss number three of Necrotic Wake is maybe the most egregious example of this. It's been nerfed multiple times, and it is still a key depleter on Tyrannical if people don't use all three spears, or if anybody mistimes any cooldowns, or it just if any way anyone plays imperfectly, that boss is probably going to kill your key. In general, I think dungeons are still too long, but this is an intentional design, right? This is not like uh, me saying this is why they're bad. It's just more like this is why this is a flavor I don't really like so much. It's just a design choice I don't agree with. I think making the part time for dungeons be 30 to 40 minutes isn't great. I think they should be closer to half that 15 to 20 minutes, I think would be a more reasonable time for dungeons, at least in terms of I guess what I'm saying is I have a very different sense of what competitive dungeons should be in WoW compared to the people who make WoW, and I think that's why I really just don't like Mythic Plus as a system all that much, but that's just me. I'm not the first person in my sphere to make this point recently either. I've actually seen a lot of WoW content creators say this in the past few weeks, but I'm just going to add my name into the pile. I think if I didn't have Mythic rating to keep my interest, if Mythic Plus in its current state was all that this game had to offer, I don't really think I'd be very interested in the game as it is right now. I have 20 years invested in a WoW, a lot of my life, so I definitely have a significant emotional investment and a lot of nostalgia built up over the years, and I still like a lot of things about the game. Rating, obviously. I like thinking and talking about classes. I think most of the more casual-oriented content that has been released over the last couple of years, especially with Dragonflight and The War Within, is pretty successful in delivering a fun, lighthearted, casual experience that you can kind of dip in and out of. I don't really think Delves have delivered on that promised experience at all once Blizzard started moving their tuning all over the place mid-season. And I think Mythic Plus has kind of followed that same line. It's just kind of been a flop this season as well. Now, I don't want this to be negative. I want to offer useful feedback, and so here goes. I think the biggest positive of Mythic Plus in its admittedly flawed state right now is that it does an incredible job of amplifying the differences in class tuning. And by differences, in a lot of cases, I kind of mean mistakes. 80% of healers and high-level keys are resto shamans. Blizzard's response to this has been to nerf holy paladins. 60% of tanks and high-level keys are warriors and druids. Monks and paladins make up less than 10% of high-level tanks combined. Paladins are getting some slight buffs. Monks really aren't getting any meaningful buffs. There are some buffs coming for underplayed hero specs, but that doesn't seem to be enough to really shift anything in a meta sense at all. Now I've tanked more than enough 9s and 10s on my Monk and DK, which are both in the 620 to 625 item level range, so very decently geared. And when I switched back to my Warrior just to kind of play around with it, and he is now more than 10 item levels behind them, I jumped into 7s and 8s with a whopping 300 Mythic Plus score, and I said, I'm good at, <laughs> I know how to play the game, I've got this ready to go by other characters, please invite. It felt like I was tanking a Mythic Zero by comparison. It actually felt substantially easier than Mythic Zero's had on my Monk, doing a plus 8 uh, mists, a plus seven necrotic wake on my warrior. The difference in damage intake is like the difference between 
pulling a garbage can up the driveway and pulling a garbage truck down the street. Any random pull in a Mythic Plus 10 dungeon will deal dramatically more damage to a tank than any Mythic Raid boss. This was true in Dragonflight as well, and it is a failure of tuning, I feel. Content that has one healer and is supposed to be more accessible to the community should not be significantly more difficult and tuned higher than content that is designed for 3-5 to five healers and positioned as the pinnacle of the game's complexity, difficulty, and group coordination. And this is where we get to the point that I think really causes all of these problems. Gear. The reward structure is imbalanced. In prior iterations of the system, plus 6 keys or their equivalent would give Mythic Upgrade Crests. Plus 8 dungeons would reward Myth Track gear from the weekly cash. This meant that for the majority of the community, hitting the top of the reward structure was several difficulty levels lower than it is now. What this did was made gearing up a lot easier. That then expedited the process of lowering the overall difficulty curve of Mythic Plus as a game mode. If every person in your group in a Mythic Plus dungeon has an extra 5 item levels, the runs are gonna be a lot easier. Maybe not for the warlock who keeps standing at every mechanic and dying instantly, but at least the rest of the group will have an easier time staying alive and doing damage and carrying them, right? This was also exacerbated by Blizzard expanding the myth track, uh, the myth item tracks number of upgrades all the way up to six. This has then meant that the potential for gear item level upgrading is even higher, and so naturally their response has been to tune the game even harder. To account for this, Blizzard has also made the Pinnacle Crafted Item Crest cost 90 crests. That's your entire weekly allotment of maximum level crests, and it means that there is less room to craft yourself targeted pieces of important gear, and then also continue to upgrade the other gear that you have. The Crest and Valor Stone system have had too many cooks in the kitchen. People complain about Valor Stones as being a very annoying time sink, and, and rightly so. They are a boring currency to farm. I've talked with a lot of people about this since the system was implemented, thought a lot about it, most notably I've talked with Sunset, and we think the problem is actually crests more than Valor Stones. Having four different upgrade currencies across gear difficulties is a bunch of crap to keep track of, and it serves no real purpose other than weekly time gating on gear upgrades. The pieces of gear already have a set item level range. Eliminating crests entirely and just using the item drops themselves as the determining factor on their item level is a lot more reasonable of a call, I think. Even if Valor Stones were also a gated currency, just removing the unnecessary bloat of multiple currencies and having to farm 8 or more plus 9 keys per week to cap your stupid gilded crest would make the game immensely more fun. Right now, in order to get your best in slot heroic level trinket for most classes, you have to farm Arakara over and over again until you get that sack brood, and then you have to farm a bunch of crests in order to upgrade it. Now, maybe you'll get some overlap there, but maybe not. Maybe you're farming it at a certain level, and then you have to do a different level of key in order to get those crests. Kind of annoying. The added step of crest farming, especially across multiple characters, is a chore. It's a grind in an unfun way. It's boring, it's tiresome, and the lack of any repeatable way to do that for gilded crests except for Mythic Plus 9 and up is single-handedly killing the enjoyment of the game for a large section of the WoW community. It is a massive bottleneck on the game's fun right now. Blizzard has deliberately slowed the process of gearing characters up. This in turn has made the content feel profoundly more difficult, and it has made the game less fun as a result. I saw a post on the WoW Reddit earlier today, and it's one of a type of post I hadn't seen in a while, actually. I really hadn't seen it a, like a lot of these since BFA and Shadowlands. And it said, Blizzard does not respect players' time. I feel very disappointed that we're kind of back to this, but I understand where they're coming from. So what's to be done? I think the easiest fix is lowering the level at which Mythic Level Crests and Weekly Cash Rewards are attained. I think the plus 6 and plus 8, respectively for those, were very reasonable spots. They allowed a more steady gear progression with completing plus 10 serving as sort of a carrot, a goal for people wanting to unlock portals, achievements, and titles, kind of a, a longer stretch goal, rather than the bare minimum for upgrading gear to the point that you can complete Mythic Plus at the top of the reward structure without significant difficulty. Mythic Plus players get such a slow drip feed of gear made available to them in the first place, and gating that behind the weekly cash after also gating it behind completing Plus 10s feels really cruel to me, it's criminal. 
Now, I don't think this is something that Blizzard's going to hotfix on a random Tuesday, but it is something that needs to be a priority for patch 10.0.5. I think they do need to take an extraordinary measure here. The state of gearing for players is dire, and Mythic Plus is suffering as a direct result. So far, Blizzard has been rolling out tiny nerfs to dungeon mechanics, or 3% buffs to underperforming hero specs, and while those are changes that also need to happen, it's a bit like taking aspirin to fix a sword sticking out of your chest. Once the underlying issue of gearing bottlenecks at that Mythic Plus 9, Mythic Plus 10 level goes away, the other problems will also go away. So there it is. I think this is probably the least fun I can remember Mythic Plus being in a long time. I, I remember BFA Season 1, with Ignore Pain and Charge both being on the global cooldown. I remember running King's Rest. I remember running Shrine of the Storm. I think this is worse. Most of the issues in the current state of Mythic Plus are caused by the heavily decelerated rate of gearing relative to recent seasons of WoW. This slow gearing is the result of Blizzard listening to feedback that gearing in the middle of Dragonflight was too fast. Feedback I immediately clocked at the time as bad, dumb, bad for the game. I put it in a video somewhere around Avarice, so I guess go back and listen to every video we've made over the past two years to find it. Complaining about gearing being too fast is like complaining about having too much ice cream. What are you talking about? How is this a problem? Whatever. Now those same people who gave that feedback then that maybe has us in this mess are complaining about the current state of things and saying that they need to go back how they were in Dragonflight Season 2 and 3. And while maybe they're still responsible, honestly, I don't care. I'll let them off the hook. I just also agree. I want to go back to how things were gearing-wise in Dragonflight Season 2 and 3. I think Dragonflight's gearing system was pretty successful, and some of the ideas that Blizzard is going for in the current Mythic Plus system do work. The Zalotev affixes are okay. I think they could ramp up the Kiss side of the Kiss Curse affixes a bit more on some of these mechanics, but, you know, I think they're okay. Fort and Tyrannical are boring, but they're just numbers checks, right? And if you're not required to do a plus 10 every week in order to get your max level reward out of the weekly cash, then who cares that they're both active every week on Mythic plus 10s? The extra 10 seconds on the timer every time someone dies, that's probably something that should just never have gone live in the first place. But the dungeons, I think, are pretty decent. I think if the other issues were solved, this would actually be a pretty successful Mythic plus season. One that people look back on fondly and say, hey, you know, that was a pretty good time, other than Stone Vault. I would like to enjoy the time I spend playing World of Warcraft, and I want other people to as well. So I'm hopeful that Blizzard will solve these issues with the reward structure and with Mythic Plus fairly soon. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>